You're entering under legalism, and I'll tell you what will happen. You will live with a guilt, and God will demand of you that you keep every one of the laws and every one of the precepts. Because you put yourself under law. That's why it's so wonderful being a Christian. I'm not under law. By grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It's a gift. You know, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost live in me. We, it says in the Bible, we have all received of the fullness of God. All of us. You see, Jesus didn't just come. Jesus said this. He said, hey, this is in... John's Gospel, he said, I and my Father will come and make our abode in you. We've all received of the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And when we're Christians, we've got God the Father. God. You see, in Jesus dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Don't think you can have Jesus without having God the Father or the Holy Ghost. You can't. You can't divide God up into bits any more than you can be divided into bits. When he comes, he comes in his fullness. The wonderful thing is, all that God is dwells in my mortal flesh. Because the reason Christ suffered in the flesh was he wanted to deal with the problems I have in the flesh. Do you know, when I meet people, I don't meet their spirit, I meet their flesh. I know people by their look. I don't see their spirit, I see their flesh. Now, sometimes the flesh displays the spirit that's in them. I've seen people and the demonic spirit within them. Their human spirit, foul, filthy thing, it, it's, it's abundantly plain on their face. The hatred, the venom comes out. Some people can't help expressing in their body their spirit. And when you're a Christian, the thing you express is the life of God in you. That's why with the song, you're the only Jesus some will ever see. You're the expression of the Godhead bodily on earth. That's what preachers are. We, we speak as the oracles of God. We're not here to express our opinion. We're here to express God. Every Christian, that's his duty. It's not a duty to, to be religious. God deliver us from religion. It's the most spiteful, mean, bitter, twisted, legalistic thing. I can't stand legalistic people. Butter wouldn't melt in their mouth. I love what happened when, when Spurgeon was, was a, uh, he listened to this guy who was preaching that he was perfectly holy. Perfectly, um, sinlessly perfect. Never ever committed sin. So Spurgeon came down to breakfast the next morning. He saw this young man sitting there eating his breakfast. And he walked over and he picked up a jug of milk and, jug of milk and poured it over his head. And the guy rose up with a furious rage. And Spurgeon said, I knew no one could be that perfect. <laughs> you know, we, we, we get the such niceties, don't we? Uh, you know, you've got to be. <laughs> so terrible. Well, I, I, I think humanity's gone all wrong. Christianity's gone all wrong. We've lost sight of who he is. How wonderful he is. My Jesus. My Savior. Hey, I have, look, look, look with me, let's go quickly to, to Ephesians. I, I just want to, I just want to encourage you all. When Paul wrote to the churches, he was always bringing correction. 
Uh, you, when you read the epistles, you've got to understand that you can't take what's said as doctrine if you don't understand to whom he wrote and why he wrote. And so many Christians read their Bibles totally ignorant of the historical context. And because they're ignorant of the historical context, they take scriptures and they make them mean what they don't mean because it means what it's speaking to. Do you understand what I'm saying? A lot of people don't understand. So when he writes to the church at Colossae, or when he writes to the church at Philippi, he, he's correcting errors. And he's saying, look, this is wrong. And, and what has happened in the church of Jesus Christ, people take that uh, and they take it out of context, not appreciating why it was written. And, and when he wrote to the Ephesian church, you know, the Ephesians had one big problem. And that was they wanted to be ever so spiritual. And I meet a lot of Christians like that. We, we got so religious, you can't even be normal. So religious, meh, you know, mustn't say anything that people could take as criticism. You know, uh, a Christian should never be critical. Well, Jesus was mighty unchristian. We looked at it yesterday, you know, in Matthews. 23 when he talked to the Pharisees and the Sadducees man if that wasn't critical when you start calling people vipers scorpions snakes rattlesnake uh, cockroaches and stuff uh, and you know you, you realize hey maybe Jesus didn't know how to be sanctimonious like you <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1 <laughs> verse 2 Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Hath blessed us. You know when I got born again I got everything. There weren't more to have people say to me, oh, I want more of God. How can you have more of the fullness of the Godhead bodily? How can you have more? When Christ lives in you, Holy Ghost lives in you, God the Father lives in you, how can you have more of him? And the Bible says, and Paul writes to the Ephesian church and he says, I want you to know you've been blessed with all things there is nothing greater than God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Ghost living within you and you can't have more than him is that plain why is it Christians are going about praying and praying for a new move a new this a new that a new anointing hey you've got everything 